Hi, I'm Dr. Makan and picture some of these erectile dysfunction scenarios that I'm going to be talking about and also I'm going to talk about how you can fix it naturally, right? So you come home one evening after a long stressful day at work and your partner wants you to have sex, you know, there's of course some chemistry. You think you, you will like it also, but uh, you have a problem getting an erection this time around. You're motivated, your partner is motivated, but you are having problems getting an erection. But this time wasn't that great. Next time you try it and everything is fine. You don't have a problem this next time around. So in this case, you probably doesn't need medical treatment as long as it rarely happens. It happens once in a while, right? So if it starts to happen more often, then you might want to talk to your doctor. Now the second scenario, sometimes when you try to have sex, you get only partially erect and hard. Your er erection isn't rigid enough to enter your partner, right? That's a problem. So in this more severe case of erectile dysfunction, the man isn't able to get even slightly erect or it's very weak. But there are some degrees to this condition. Even mild erectile dysfunction is worth discussing with this doctor. Now in the second scenario, you can get hard, you can never get hard you can never get erect that is a problem that you need to discuss with your doctor then the third scenario you get a good erection during foreplay and you're playing nice and nice and you have a good erection but after you start to have intercourse you lose it now this can be very frustrating for you and your partner and even though you are able to get an erection it doesn't last long enough to complete sexual intercourse and you may definitely have erectile dysfunction and there's an estimated 80% of erectile dysfunction is due to these physical causes and causes that can be potentially corrected. Um, often it is high blood pressure. The other 20 can be psychological. And for a long time, doctors thought that erectile dysfunction was mostly in one's head, right? Now they know that is not entirely true. Doctors, we've made our mistakes, right? So, and I'm here talking about just we need to improve. Still, the mind plays a big role in getting an erection. Maybe you are losing your erection due to anxiety or other issues between you and your partner, and your doctor can actually also help you determine that as well and try to help out. Now, these were some three scenarios. Now, I'm gonna talk about a fourth scenario. Your doctor prescribes a new medication for something unrelated to sexual dysfunction, right? And you notice that it's more difficult to get an erection uh, now than it was before they started taking this medication. Surprise, right? Uh, side effects of drugs can cause up to 25% of erectile dysfunction causes. Now, blood pressure medications can be lifesavers, but erection problems are sometimes a side effect of some of these medications. Other medications to treat different diseases can also lead to erectile dysfunction, including antidepressants, antipsychotics, uh, sedatives, seizure drugs can also cause some. So talk to your doctor about switching to a potentially a different drug that is less likely to cause you erectile dysfunction problems. Now moving over to the fifth scenario, right? Let's say for example, you typically have several alcoholic drinks every night. It's difficult for you to get an interaction when you have been drinking. A glass of wine may help you and your partner get in the mood, but heavy drinking, on the other hand, can really hamper your sexual performance. What happens is that alcohol depresses the nervous system, which may cause erection problems if you have had too much to drink. If it happens only when you drink and the effect is temporary, so you should limit your drinking, of course, and avoid looking for a medicinal treatment for this type of erectile dysfunction. And you should not seek to get, gain a, get a medication to treat alcohol-related erectile dysfunction. But of course, also keep in mind that alcohol also has long-term toxic effects on your nerves that can cause erectile dysfunction, even at times when you are not drinking. So long-term damage can happen. So keep that in mind with alcohol. Now, as we talked about that high blood pressure and some of these other causes can cause erectile dysfunction. And blood pressure is a major cause of all of these uh, erection problems. A study in the Journal of American Geriatric Society found that about 49% of men ages between 40 to 79 
with high blood pressure had erectile dysfunction. Now, there was another study of men with high blood pressure, and they found similar findings. And this was published in the Journal of Urology. And they found that 68% of men had some degree of erectile dysfunction while having high blood pressure at the same time. And out of those, 45% of these men were considered to have severe erectile dysfunction. They were really having a tough time in bed. And I'm pretty sure that their spouses did not like that. So what happens? The high blood pressure keeps the arteries that carry blood into the penis from dilating or from opening up the way they are actually supposed to. It also makes the smooth muscle in your penis loses ability to relax. You know, you're, you have muscles in your blood vessels and in your penis and they need to relax to let it gorge up with blood and making it stiff and tight, right? So with high blood pressure, these things don't happen. And as a result, not enough blood flows into the penis to make a good erection. Now, the other thing we found and why it's also more important to control your blood pressure is that people with high blood pressure also tend to have low testosterone levels. Now, testosterone, we know, is a male hormone that plays a big role in sexual arousal and even sexual performance. So all of these things go hand in hand. Now, high blood pressure by itself can lead to erectile dysfunction. But some drugs for treating high blood pressure, as we talked about, actually cause it as well. For example, diuretics or water pills and beta blockers are high blood pressure drugs most commonly linked to erectile dysfunction. Because diuretics actually make you dehydrated. And whenever you are dehydrated without any of these medications even, you will have trouble with your erections because your erection needs good amount of blood volume in you. So some people on diuretics may have trouble with their erections. And diuretics may also need to decrease the amount of zinc in the body. Now, your body needs zinc to, to make uh, testosterone. So all of these things uh, go hand in hand. Now, beta blockers like metoprolol, um, atenolol, they, they can dampen the response to nerve impulses that lead to an erection. They are neuromodulators as well, these beta blockers. They can be very helpful for a couple of things, but for this purpose, they could lead to some problems to some people. They may also make it more difficult for the arteries in the penis to widen and let the blood flow in. What's more, they can make you feel sedated and sometimes even depressed. And the mind always plays some part in sexual arousal. So all of these things combined can lead to problems. That's why my channel is filled with videos on how to naturally treat your high blood pressure. So we don't run into the need to take this medication. Sometimes there are other choices that men make that can lead to problems. For example, if you smoke, smoking increases your blood pressure and damages blood vessels and reduces blood flow all around your body. So what will the doctor do? The doctor may discuss any of your risk factors for heart disease before recommending treatment, as well as the side effects that you may have from some of these medications. I know, of course, that telling your doctor that you have difficulty with your erection isn't the most easiest thing to do. But to get the right care, you have to tell your doctor everything, including the truth about things like drinking alcohol, using drugs or smoking cigarettes. Now, trust me, it is in your best interest to be totally honest. You should also be prepared to discuss some questions about your sex life. They might ask things like, uh, what's your sexual orientation? Uh, do you have sex with women, men, uh, both? Uh, do you have a steady partner, multiple partners? Um, how is sex with your partner? That is a very valid question. Emotional things, how, how are they handled? Has anything changed recently? Has anything upsetting happened to you lately all of these things play a part then questions such as do you have morning stiffness right or questions such as when you masturbate do you get an erection that is a very valid question and doctors can assess what is the problem with your erection issues if you're able to masturbate fine but you can't perform in bed <laughs> that's that's a that's a different story right and of course the doctor will ask about if you have stressors in life so the doctor may be seeing you for the first time. Uh, in that situation, they may look to examine your penis, your testicles, your prostate gland. Some men also have their testosterone level tested. There's another test that is done sometimes to help determine whether you get erections when you are sleeping. So what happens there is that the doctor may send you home with a special tape that you wrap around your penis before you go to bed. If this tape is broken in the morning, 
you had an erection during the night and you didn't know about it. This means that the cause of your erection problem may not be physical or may not be that you actually have a medical problem underlying. Hey, you are getting an erection and you're able to break that tape. So you have no problem actually getting hard and stiff. So this leads the doctor to think that probably something more psychological is happening. Now talk about some natural strategies that you can apply to fix your sexual dysfunction and first are going to be some supplements. First is going to be L-arginine. Now this study was published in the journal Sexual Medicine Reviews and this study actually explores the synergistic effects of L-arginine and fictogenol in erectile dysfunction and it shows that there are positive outcomes and good formulations of L-arginine can actually increase your nitric oxide levels and of course we know if you watch my channel that nitric oxide is good for lots of things including helping out with erectile dysfunction then in another study they looked at uh, ginseng now this was a meta-analysis in the journal uh, medical research reviews and this meta-analysis evaluated the efficacy of red ginseng in treating ed they found it to be a beneficial supplement now the next supplement is Jinkgo by Loba. This was published in the Journal of Ethnopharmacology. Now this review assesses the evidence for Jinkgo by Loba in treating erectile dysfunction by antidepressants showing potential effectiveness. So you can check this article out as well. Then there are studies on lifestyle modifications, for example, physical activity. And this was published in the Journal of Sexual Medicine. And this review analyzed several studies demonstrating that regular exercise significantly improves erectile dysfunction in men with ED. So if you have a health cause, you have um, high blood pressure, diabetes, you do some regular good exercise, it can reverse your sexual dysfunction. And there are numerous studies on this. Now, next is, of course, very important. And we talk about this in our channel. Weight management is essentially important. And this article was published in Obesity Reviews. And this article consolidates data from various studies showing that weight loss in obese men leads to improvement in erectile dysfunction. Who, who would know, right? I mean, these are just plain facts. These are easy to do things and just cut out, do intermittent fasting. Look at my videos on intermittent fasting how you can control your weight and lose, lose lose your weight and get your health and vigor back. Then, of course, we mentioned about smoking, right? You have to stop smoking. Come on, man. And this was published in the Journal of Andrology. And this meta-analysis highlighted the strong correlation between smoking cessation, stopping smoking, and voila, improvement in your erectile dysfunction. Now, don't say I never told you so, but I told you so. Quit smoking and a lot of good things will come to you now people talk about oh smoking has nicotine and nicotine could have these and this benefits separate from the smoking part but no if you're smoking anything related to smoking smoking itself is bad for you now coming to the dietary means of removing or correcting erectile dysfunction and we know about the mediterranean diet and this was uh, published in the nutrition journal and this was a piece which showed that if you adhere to a Mediterranean lifestyle, then it correlates with a reduced erectile dysfunction. Um, so this basically means that you are eating uh, lean meat, you're having olive oil, you're having vegetables, uh, you can have fish, fatty fish, they, that's, what, that's what they like, and you're having whole grains. You're not having garbage, you're not having processed food. Actually, anything away from the SAD diet, the standard American diet, will actually probably help out. But Mediterranean diet has some research along with it. And as we talked earlier about uh, limiting your alcohol consumption, now this was published in International Journal of Impotence Research. And this was a review and they examined the relationship between alcohol consumption and erectile dysfunction, suggesting that if you moderate, you cut down um, uh, and don't be excessive with your alcohol intake, you will gain benefits then of course we know that stress reduction and particularly uh, mindfulness and stress management has been known to help and this was published in the journal of sexual medicine and this systematic review analyzes how mindfulness practices actually alleviate stress and improve uh, sexual dysfunction including erectile uh, dysfunction so mindfulness basically means you are in tune with your feelings and you're able to assess hey 
I don't need to get angry. I don't need to be stressed out with this situation. So those things go along with mindfulness. And of course, the last but not the least, and of course, a lot of men have trouble dealing with this because we don't like to talk to people, right? But counseling can help. Now, this was published in the journal Psychosexual Health, and it showed that psychological interventions um, can actually help injure erectile dysfunction symptoms. Uh, these were a couple of things that I want to talk about. Now, just to recap how you can treat erectile dysfunction naturally, we talked about L-arginine supplements, we talked about ginseng, uh, we talked about ginkgo biloba, physical activity, controlling your weight, a cessation of cigarette smoking, going on the Mediterranean diet, limiting alcohol consumption, mindfulness and stress management, and at the end, counseling can be effective. So hopefully this video was helpful. What do you think about this? Are you having issues? Um, seek help. Get the right uh, education for yourself. This is what I talk about. So yeah. And of course, we are all looking to be healthy and naturally treat high blood pressure. And the first thing you need to do is figure out how you can eat properly for high blood pressure. And I'm looking to solve that. And I have this 30-day high blood pressure your meal plan this goes over your breakfast lunch uh, even snack and dinner it gives you all the ingredients not only that it also gives you the calories you're going to be consuming and at the end i actually have your weekly shopping list so the weekly shopping list you do your shopping once a week and get everything ready uh, for all the instruction that we have if you want this you can check that out um, free uh with a link in the description you probably have to give your email where we can send you this and some more options for you that you may be interested in anyways uh dr Murkan, you like this uh, like and subscribe share this video with your family and friends and i'm going to put up a video right over here i think you're going to like that video I, I want you to watch it for your own health thank you so much